The company Internet Computer with their token ICP is going to revolutionize not only Web3, but it's going to bring Web2 into Web3 seamlessly. In this video, we're going to cover ICP's technology. We are going to talk about canisters and what they are and how they are being used. Then we're going to move into ICP being EVM capable. And then finally, we will wrap it up talking about their chain key technology and what that's doing to revolutionize security in the blockchain world. Don't go anywhere. Let's go ahead and do a deep dive into ICP. Okay, as I said in my intro, Internet Computer with their token ICP truly is going to revolutionize Web3 and they're going to bring Web2 to Web3 seamlessly with this technology. Before we dive into these news stories, I need to stop and say thank you to everybody that watched this previous video, which is my ICP video part one. Within that video, I asked you guys if you will show me love and support on this video here. I will bring out part two and do a deeper dive into ICP. I got overwhelming support from that, so I need to do my part and hold my end up up the deal and bring ICP deep dive part two to you. And that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's go ahead and dive into these news stories. We're going to start off with their canister technology and what that is and how it operates. So you have a better idea of why ICP is becoming valuable. Let's go ahead and dive into that news story. Now, you'll see on your screen, it says, Canister is the evolution of smart contracts. On the internet computer, smart contracts are called canisters. A canister is a more advanced concept than a traditional smart contract. It is bundled unit of a WebAssembly, WASM, bytecode, and the memory pages where that code runs. This means canisters package both logic and data together. They are highly versatile and can perform general purpose computation, store data, and even serve interactive web content directly to end users' browsers. This capability is revolutionary as it allows developers to build end-to-end -end dApps without relying on centralized front-end hosting. So with this canister technology, the developer apps or decentralized apps, I'm sorry, from developers, they can do it on a decentralized network, no longer working on a centralized network, giving them more flexibilities and capabilities to bring their products to you. And also with this technology, as we spoke about in the first one, is that you are going to start having the ability to talk to your AI, program it, and it will build out your website exactly how you want it. But we will do a part three of ICP, should I get some support in this one as well. We'll dive into what they are doing with Caffeine AI that will give you that ability to make your own websites by speaking to AI. So if you want to learn more about that, definitely leave a comment down below. Let me know you're interested in that and hit that like button so I know that we got some people that are looking out for that video. The more people that interact with the video, the more that I understand the audience wants that. I want to bring that to you. Okay, so let's go ahead and watch this video that's going to break down a canister for you and have you have a better visual for people that are more visual learners. This is going to be a great video for you. So let's go ahead and dive into that. It's about 20 seconds. Don't go anywhere. He has a powerful new type of smart contract called canisters. They are decentralized web servers that can directly host full websites with low latency. Canisters can store up to 400 gigabytes of data, perform complex calculations, and connect to Web2 services and APIs without oracles. So I hope that video gave you a better understanding of what a canister is, but we'll go ahead and recap. So essentially this canister can hold 400 gigabytes of information. It can hold a whole website's data within this canister. It has access to tapping to different APIs, which is just essentially the back end of whatever program, computer, website, et cetera, you're using, you can tap in, plug and play, and this will even be compatible with Web2 sites as well. And that's how they're going to bridge Web3 to Web3, uh, Web2 to and make it seamlessly uh, transitional. And what's also interesting about ICP is they are using a decentralized node system as to where now your cloud services today, like AWS or iCloud, are more centralized data centers. 
how ICP is seeing this future is let's spread that across multiple nodes. And within those nodes, even if, even if one node goes down, the rest still work. We'll cover that piece of it as we talk about their chain key technology, and that will break down here a little bit. We'll watch another video very similar to the one you just saw, so don't go anywhere. But let's go ahead and move into how they're EVM uh, capable, and let's talk about the reverse gas fees right quick. So how this reverse gas fees work is the programmers and developers of the canisters, they front load the ICP tokens into those canisters. So what this means for you as a user, you don't have to pay for that fee that if the ICP token goes up or down in price, that doesn't matter to you. You're going to pay that flat fee, which is huge by itself. But it's also interesting is now that it is a up front loaded gas fee, it also burns those tokens. So ICP is similar to what you probably have heard by now by XRP is that it is uh, deflationary. It burns tokens over time. That's another reason why this project will become valuable. So let's go ahead and talk about the EVM capable via uh, Bitfinity, okay? So read on your screen here, it says, ICP is a layer two EVM blockchain solution that is built on Ethereum blockchain while leveraging ICP scalability. In conclusion, ICP blockchain has been redefining the internet stack while offering a scalable, secure, and developer user-friendly platform to get more users on board. We have different real cases such as DeFi, NFTs, gaming, decentralized AI, domain, and others. So well, that's important. Think about this project. This project isn't just tied to gaming. It's not just tied to AI. It's not just tied to finance. It is tied to DeFi, NFTs, gaming, decentralized AI, and domains. So there is a lot of use case for this technology, which again makes it valuable, right? So let's go ahead and dive into the EVM video so you get a better visual for your visual learners out there. I myself am a visual learner, so I know how much this helps actually conceptualize what this means. Let's go ahead and watch this video. I think it's like 15 seconds long. Don't go anywhere. Valuable information. And then we'll move into the other side of it, which is the chain key, which makes this project stand alone by itself. Let's go ahead and watch the EVM. Don't go anywhere. Be right back. Prone to security breaches. ICP canisters can directly sign transactions on other blockchains, such as Bitcoin and Ethereum, without bridges or centralized service providers. Okay, so you can see in that video that with a canister that is full of all that data information, it can plug and play into an Ethereum network without using a bridge. A lot of technology out there needs a bridge currency or, or bridge token, I'm sorry, to interact with Ethereum. But with ICP in their canister, they can directly connect into Ethereum's network without that bridge. Again, this gives it a major benefit compared to others. And this, again, will make it valuable, especially as Ethereum grows and becomes more popular and more utilized. You're going to want more access to that network and be able to tap into that network more often, right? And ICP is going to help do that for you. So let's move into the chain key cryptography, okay? This is going to make a difference as far as how people are feeling secure with ICP. It's gonna make governments even feel more secure with it just because how the chain key operates. Before I confuse you even more, let's go ahead and read about it and then we will watch a separate video like we just saw on the last two to give you that visual. So it says chain key, a cornerstone of the internet computer is chain key cryptography a collection of advanced cryptographic technologies that gives ICP its unique capabilities. A key component is threshold signatures, where a subnet can have a single public key, while the corresponding secret key is split into shares and distributed among the nodes in the subnet. A single node or a small group of malicious nodes can forge a signature. This allows subnet to sign messages with extreme efficiency and security. This technology enables several groundbreaking features. Speed, transactions can be finalized in one to two seconds, a massive improvement over many other blockchains. Efficiency, external users of other subnets can verify a transaction with a, public, with a single public key without needing to download and validate an entire blockchain history. Chain evolution, it facilitates essential maintenance activities like garbage collection, purging old data to keep nodes lightweight, fast forward for new or recovering nodes and seamless protocol upgrades without disrupting the network. So 
if that's confusing again, let's go ahead and watch this video, then talk about what we just read and saw. Then hopefully you have a better understanding with that discussion here in a second. Let's go ahead and dive into this video. I do believe it is 25 seconds. Please do not become a goldfish on me and swim off to a new video. A lot of good information in this so you have a better understanding of what ICP is and how they are using chain key to keep their network secure. So about 25 seconds, be right back. Technology with chain key, up to one third of nodes could be offline or malicious and the network can still generate a secure signature. The pieces of the secret key stored on each node are also constantly scrambling so that any information leaked from a node is useless to attackers. Okay, so that chain key technology, let's break that down again, although we read and watched the video. So that chain key technology, once we have that one key, that key can be distrib distributed into other keys. This makes it harder for a hacker to gain into your network, into your system. And also, as you heard, even if you had one, three, one third of those keys down or nodes down, you still have access to that block, which is huge and it's a security benefit and you don't have to worry about it crashing. This is something we can learn from when AWS went down, Amazon Web Service went down a couple of weeks ago, back in, I think it's like end of October, going into November of 2025. AWS was shut down and a lot of people were locked out of their storage or their data. Companies could not operate because they depended on AWS to be up and running. But that was shut down. With ICP, you can now have things shut down and not the whole network collapse on you. So this is just gonna be part two to ICP. Again, if you wanna learn more, leave a like, leave a comment. We'll do a part three deeper dive into ICP because I promise you there's a lot more information we haven't spoke about yet. That's all I have for you on this video, but hey, as always, if you like what you see, leave a comment, leave a like, consider subscribing. It'd be very much appreciated. Until the next one, take care of yourself, take care of the people around you and become that change you wanna see. I'll see you on the next one.